Okay, so in this lesson, we're going to look at how to convert between grams and moles and vice versa. So mass and amount. So it's called mass amount conversions. I'll just remind you here, we know mass is measured in grams and amount is measured in moles. And when we're looking to convert between these two units, we need a conversion factor that relates grams and moles. And this is where the concept of molar mass comes in. It's exactly what it sounds like, the mass in grams of one mole of a substance. So just to help develop this concept of molar mass and how, how we, where we obtain the values from, I'll just take you back to our first unit when we were talking about isotopes. So here's one atom, one atom of carbon, for example. So when you look at the periodic table, the mass, the average atomic mass of an atom of carbon is reported as 12.01. And that has units of atomic mass units. That's not grams, that's certainly not grams. We can't even see one atom of carbon, let alone that have a mass of 12 grams, you know, more than the pencil you're holding right now. But what if we had 6.02 times 10 to the 23 atoms of carbon? So could I draw that many atoms, that many circles here? Hopefully you're thinking no, that there's no way, there's not enough um, hours in my life in order to do that. And so this, these dots here are just representing the idea that imagine a pile here of 6.02 times 10 to the 23 atoms of carbon, much like the pile that I had on the watch glass in the previous video. So the interesting thing is that that many atoms of carbon actually has a mass the same value as the mass from the periodic table, except that's the number of grams. So 6.02 times 10 to the 23 atoms of carbon is actually one mole of carbon, and that has a mass of 12.01 grams. You might be thinking, how did they set that up, or how did that happen? Well. They chose 12.01 grams of carbon, so the same number here. They chose that many grams of carbon to be the standard for which the unit of mole was going to be defined. And then they experimentally determined how many atoms of carbon are in the 12.01 grams. And that's where the number 6.02 times 10 to the 23 comes from. So how do we communicate that in writing? Well, you'll see this capital M here stands for molar mass. So this is the symbol for molar mass. So capital M, the molar mass of carbon equals 12.01 grams per mole. And so ultimately you can find that value, the molar mass on the periodic table. So go ahead and check your periodic table, either the one in the textbook, the one in your test reference sheet, or any periodic table online. And I'm going to ask in this course that you round the data, the mass data, to two digits after the decimal. So have a look for hydrogen on the periodic table and round the average atomic mass you see there, round that to two digits after the decimal. And then imagine now that we're talking about one mole of hydrogen atoms. So that will now be the grams 1.01 grams per mole of hydrogen atoms. What about oxygen? Find oxygen on the periodic table. Round to two digits after the decimal. 16.00 grams per mole. How do you think we're going to handle water? We want the molar mass of water. So we have two atoms of hydrogen and one atom of oxygen for every molecule of water. We're looking for the mass of one mole. Well, hopefully you've got the idea that the subscript here, two, so that we're going to do two times the molar mass of hydrogen plus one times the molar mass of oxygen. Because if we have one mole of water molecules, here they are, if we have one mole, well, there's, let me draw three. Right? If we have three molecules of water, right, you can see that there are six H's, so the two times three, right, and three oxygens, so one times three. Three oxygens, six hydrogens. The fact that there were three particles meant we did one times that, right? 
And if we had one mole, then we would have 6.02 times 10 to the 23 of these particles. So that would be then the, gr the grams. We would use the periodic table to find the grams of one mole of those oxygen atoms and one mole of those hydrogen atoms, but recognizing that we're going to be multiplying the hydrogen by two. And so two times the molar mass of hydrogen, two times 1.01, .01, plus one times the molar mass of oxygen, one times 16.00. When you're multiplying by a scalar, so this number here is a scalar, right, and so is this one, there's no significant figures associated with that. So really, we're just going to follow the rule for addition. Having two digits after the decimal here and two digits after the decimal here, we want to have two digits after the decimal in our final answer. So 18.02 grams per mole. All right, how about the molar mass of methane? You're going to have one mole of carbon atoms there and four moles of hydrogen atoms. So 1 times the molar mass of carbon plus 4 times the molar mass of hydrogen. So 1 times 12.01 .01 plus 4 times 1.01 .01 is going to give us 16.05 grams per mole. And so that's what we do. We use the subscripts in the formula and multiply by the molar mass of each element. So there's a couple more examples here the molar mass of copper 2 nitrate, and then I threw in a hydrate to see if you can transfer the concepts you're learning. Okay, so pause the video, calculate those molar masses, and then check back. Okay, so in figuring out the molar mass of copper 2 nitrate, I used 1 times the molar mass of copper plus 2 nitrogens and 6 oxygens. So just to be clear, you need to distribute this too. There are 2 nitrogens, 6 oxygens, 1 copper. In doing the hydrate here, I showed a couple different ways to do it. Well, three actually. There's one sodium, two carbons, three hydrogens, two oxygens, six hydrogens here, and three oxygens. And so I split them all up in this first example here. And then I said, well, if you know the molar mass of water, 18.02 from our earlier calculation, then you could literally, literally handle the hydrate by replacing this with three times the molar mass of water. Or perhaps when you did it, you just put all the hydrogens together. So these three here plus the six here is actually nine, and you did the oxygens two here plus those three is actually five, and then you just calculated that way. So whichever way you do it there, you should end up with 136.10. And just a comment that your calculator is probably not showing this zero. So you need to put it in there. Your molar masses should have two digits after the decimal. Okay, so as far as showing your work for molar mass, this really becomes a basic skill. If you can pull out your periodic table and your calculator and literally go, whoops, and literally go straight to this answer, then, then I would just be expecting you to write the symbol with the formula and then equals this value. Okay, so it won't be necessary to show your work, although in the lesson you should have examples of how you did the work for reference later. All right, so a couple of uh, examples here. There's just two examples. Looking at mass amount conversions. You'll be practicing more in class. So one cup of ice cream, vanilla ice cream in particular, contains 0.041 moles of sugar. And I gave you the formula of the table sugar, the sucrose here. C12 H22O11. So I'm asking you to determine the mass of sugar in one cup of ice cream. So this is what we're looking for, right? And we know in one cup of ice cream, there's this many moles. So this is our given. So we'll look for the mass of sugar. You can either write that as number of grams, or you can write that as the mass, lowercase m, that stands for mass and we can put the formula here. Equals, then we start with the 0 0.041 moles, and then drop the unit down following factor label. We'll go from moles to grams. So in one mole, how many grams are there? 
So right here, this conversion factor that relates grams to moles, this is molar mass. So here's where we need to calculate the molar mass of sucrose. Okay, and so C12, H22O11, the molar mass is 342.34 grams in one mole. So because I've set up factor label for the moles to cancel, that will leave me with the number of grams. 0 0.041 times 342.34 gives us 14.03594. Now how many sig figs should be in the final answer? You're multiplying. Count the sig figs here. There are two. And count the sig figs in the molar mass here. There are five. So we'll round to two at the end. So we end up chopping it right here. So we end up with 14 grams. So 14 grams of sugar in one cup of ice cream. You might want to Google what your RDI, your recommended daily intake is of sugar. Um, but boy, I love ice cream. Okay, now last question here. Calculate the amount. So now we're looking for amount of acetaminophen. That's the active ingredient in Tylenol uh, in a 250 milligram tablet. So the idea is that we have 250 milligrams of acetaminophen and we have to convert that to moles or amount. So we're looking for the moles, N, of acetaminophen in 250 milligrams of acetaminophen. So we need to remember N is measured in moles, right? That's what we're looking for. So we need to go from milligrams all the way to moles. Well, I know I can go from grams to moles, so if I can convert milligrams to moles, then I can convert from grams to moles. And right here, I'll need the molar mass. So you have to go ahead and figure out the molar mass of acetaminophen and plug that number in here. Okay, and so we have 151.18 grams per mole from eight carbons, nine hydrogens, one nitrogen, and two oxygens. So we go ahead and plug into our calculator. 250 divided by 1,000 divided by 151.18. My calculator gives me 1.653 times 10 to the negative three. And in canceling my units, I see that milligrams cancel, grams cancel, that leaves me with moles, which is the unit here of the final answer. In terms of sig figs, this 250 has two sig figs. Remember the exception, there's no decimal, that zero is a trailing zero. This 1,000 here is considered a definition, the idea that there's 1,000 milligrams in one gram, so we ignore it in terms of sig figs. Looking at the molar mass over here, there are five sig figs. Because the mass data on the periodic table is experimentally determined, we do count sig figs there. All right, so two sig figs is the lowest value of sig figs, so we come back to the 1.653, and round looking at the five, we bump the six up to a seven. So final answer has two sig figs, 1.7 times 10 to the negative three, and the unit of moles. So you can see that we convert mass to moles, so grams to moles and moles to grams, just by setting up factor label, so listing listing what we're looking for on the left side, what we've been given on the right side of the equal sign, and then just following the units. And again, when you need a conversion factor between moles and grams, or between grams and moles, use molar mass.